Hoffer worked with Bill W., the founder of Alcoholics Anonymous. And Bill W. and Abram became good friends. Bill W. suffered from severe depression. Abram said, you should take some niacin. He suggested 3,000 milligrams of niacin a day. That was the end of Bill W.'s depression. Bill W. then suggested to people that were alcoholic, why don't you try taking niacin and see if it helps your depression, see if it helps your alcoholism. And the majority of the people that tried the niacin had great improvement. So Bill W., founder of Alcoholics Anonymous, wanted AA to use niacin and vitamin therapy. But AA, which had already been infiltrated, I would say is a good word, by the medical profession, rejected that. So to this day, Alcoholics Anonymous focuses on many laudable steps that alcoholics can and should do to stop drinking. But it does not recommend vitamin therapy. At the time when there was concern a growing concern about the issue of whether the antidepressant SSRI drugs were causing suicide and there had been a few campaigners in, in around about 2000 who had been saying that there were problems with these drugs and the regulatory authorities and the drug companies had been denying it. We did a whole study on those school shootings over in America and we studied um, a, a number of these incidents and in most cases, in most cases the shooter is either on or withdrawing from these types of psychiatric medications at the time that they commit these offences. And yet none of this stuff really comes out in the trials at all. And an American researcher came up with the fact that uh, Prozac, which was of course the, the brand leader at the time, was about to come off patent. And so they wondered whether there was a new drug uh, coming up. And they did some research and they found indeed there was. There was a thing called Prozac R and there'd been some tinkering with the molecular um, structure of it and in order to produce a new drug you have to say what the improvements are going to be and in the patent application for Prozac R it said will not cause the um, suicidal thoughts and feelings which are associated with the existing drug precisely the thing that the drug company had been denying was going on for the past 10 years I worked with a lady once who was suicidally depressed she lived at home with her family. She was in her 50s, and she spent all day sitting in a corner, face to the corner. She wouldn't talk to anyone. She wouldn't eat with anyone. She was totally uncommunicative. She was under the care of a psychiatrist, of course, as she should be. And the psychiatrist had her on a variety of medications, which you would expect. The family was wondering about nutrition, and I mentioned to them about Dr. Hoffer's work with niacin and they wondered how much she needed to take. This person was very seriously ill. And I mentioned that Dr. Hoffer normally gave about 3,000 milligrams a day of niacin, but some people need a lot more, especially very sick people, and they should give her as much as it takes to make her better. Well, they figured they could do that. So at 11,500 milligrams of niacin a day, she was sitting at the table and talking to them like nothing had happened. So they went to the psychiatrist, showed the psychiatrist this recovered person and the psychiatrist said well I don't think you should take all that niacin it might be harmful so they stopped giving her the niacin and she was back in the corner safety with niacin there's not one death from niacin per year on average there have been one or two attributed over the last 15 or 20 years but there's not even one death per year from niacin. And how many people that are suicidally depressed actually go and end their lives?